Hi, I'm Ronald. This is Stormy. We are here to do a group project over Lun expansion protocol. And today we're going to go over indications, contraindications, precautions and or possible complications, assessments of need, monitoring, common treatment modalities, and medication agents. First of all, for indications, indications of lung expansion protocol are very broad. They are multiple. There are multiple indi indications for different instruments for the situation. Overall, they follow a certain guideline for general purpose of it. Indications can be from a need to improve lung expansion and the presence of conditions predisposing to the development of pulmonary atelectasis from upper abdominal or thoracic surgery, or the presence of restrictive lung defects such as quadriplegia or the dysfunction of the diaphragm. In this case, a spirometer would be ideal other indications would require better therapy and interventions such as CPAP or BiPAP, which could be used to prevent widespread atelectasis or severe intrapulmonary shunting. The contraindications are very wide for lung expansion. A pneumothorax is a definite contraindication, as well as patients who are suspected of hypoventilation. Other contraindications narrow down what equipment to use or not to use if a patient is hemodynamically unstable. They won't be able to tolerate CPAP even for a short period. Patients who are susceptible to vomiting and nausea can, can create problems as well. The, the further you get into the specifics, there's such a recent, such as recent facial or skull surgery, tracheoesophageal fistula or surgery, and an active hematosis contraindicate lung expansion. Patients can also be uncooperative with proper use of devices or even unresponsive, which will contraindicate which device not to use. Now that we've gone over indications, contraindications, next is precautions or complications. The precautions or complications range from which equipment be used for lung expansion. With an IS, treatment is useless if it can't be used properly with appropriate patient education and coordination. The treatment may also cause hyperventilation or barotrauma. Even discomfort from an inadequate pain control would result in ineffective therapy. Devices such as an IPPB have a few hazards as well. IPPBs can possibly cause increased airway resistance, more barotrauma, hyper or hypoventilation, increased BQ mismatch, and even produce a degree of air trapping or auto beep. With CPAP therapy, hazards include hypoventilation and hypercapnia. Barotrauma is also a potential hazard and more likely to occur with a patient with emphysema or with and blebs. Gastric distance. Gastric distension may also occur, especially if CFAT values exceed 20 centimeters of water pressure. And the assessments of needs are crucial to figuring out what equipment to use or not to use or what might impede proper therapy. Assessment of need involve conditions predisposing to atelectasis, including immobility, poor pain control, and abdominal binders, surgical procedure, involving upper abdomen or thorax, presence of clinically significant atelectasis, reduced tidal volumes or vital capacity, fatigue or muscle weakness with impending respiratory failure, and neuromuscular or skeletal disorders associated with decrease in lung volumes and capacities. Now that all, that all of that is out of the way, let's go to the monitoring of lung expansion. This is where things don't get too complicated. One can monitor breath sounds, respiratory rate and volume, arterial hemoglobin saturation via pulse ox, patient's subjective response to therapy, such as pain, discomfort, or dys and dyspenia. If, there's in if there is mechanical ventilation, you can monitor machine performance, such as trigger sensitivity, peak pressures, flow settings, and PEEP. Monitoring patients with CPAP therapy it is important to monitor CO2 levels, the dangers of hypoventilation, as well as making sure your alarms work for any pressure leaks or mechanical failure. Common treatment modalities include 
the IS incentive spirometer, IPPB or the MetaNav, CPAP, BiPAP, the EasyPAP or invasive mechanical ventilator in worst case scenarios, and mobilization when possible. Medication agents, it got a little tricky in here with lung expansion, it's more of a situational kind of thing, but overall, medication agents that can help are bronchodilators to increase oxygenation, O2 therapy, bronchohygiene, maybe anti-infective agents, depending on the situation, anything to treat whatever maybe the underlying cause, really. Now that we got that out of the way, we are going to do an example of a disorder slash disease. In our case, our patient here, Stormy, she has developed a post-op atelectasis. Um, she came to the ER with severe abdominal pain. So to surgery to have her appendix slash gallbladder removed, whatever the case may be. Patient bottles were okay for the moment and was moved from surgery to bed rest. Patient was still sedated, wasn't given any pain medication or supervised for early mobilization. There was a crappy staff at the time. Upon checkup, eight hours later, the patient was complaining of pain and severe shortness of breath. Her PA2 was mild, uh, 62 millimeters of mercury. Her tidal volume was low due to the pain. Her breath sounds revealed fine crackles at the end of inspiration, and O2 therapy was not helping improve PaO2. Assessment also included diminished breath sounds, increased tactile and vocal phrenitis, and a dull percussion note. Blood gas was interpreted as partially compensated respiratory alkalosis, and its chest x-ray was, was ordered and revealed areas of air, small areas of airway collapse. Like so. Doctor ordered pain management and CPAP of 15 centimeter water pressure with a titrate of 92% for SpO2. Since the doctor ordered a CPAP therapy, we are going to put our patient on CPAP here. Ma'am, this is going to feel a little weird, a little uncomfortable, but it's supposed to help keep your, it's, it's called a CPAP device, continuous positive airway pressure. It's supposed to keep your alveoli open uh, from your, from your x-ray, we realized that you have some consolidation going on, alveoli collapse in the lower lobes of your lungs. And uh, this is going to keep keep your uh, keep the alveoli open and reverse your atelectasis here. You'll be able to recover shortly and be at value here as soon as you get recovered enough to move around. So I'm going to turn this CPAP on over here and put the mask on you. Get things going for you. All right, just, just a minute. Okay, mask is on secure. Type. Okay, patient has been placed on the CPAP. Later, the patient was assessed again, and breast sounds had improved as well as PaO2 and SpO2. Blood gas was fully compensated, and another chest X ray was ordered. Upon this check stick phrase, it revealed clear lobes and otherwise clear lungs, such as in this x ray here. But after that cleared up, CPAP was discontinued and immediate mobilization was ordered along with supplementary O2 therapy PRN. The patient was able to successfully, successfully recover and was discharged promptly. Well, that was our video for lung expansion protocol. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, don't be that guy that forgets to sigh. Or... And end up with this.